What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of the Mindless Horror Podcast. With me, very dear friend of mine, very good friend of mine, very good characters out there on the streets of the Goring Twenties. My first Goring Twenties guest ever, Betty Boop. How are you doing? I'm great. It's Friday. <laughs> it is Friday. It is Friday. Um, and I'm assuming, because it is technically horror related, and I already know the answer to this, but uh, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Ten out of ten. That's good stuff right there. But that's not what we're here to talk about today. Today, I want to learn a little bit about your your history in the haunt world, your hopefully love for horror, maybe. Um, so let's 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 take it back all the way back to when uh, you first were intrigued by the haunt world. Well. My first haunt visit, I was nine or 10 years old. My aunt and uncle were visiting from Fresno and they, my mom and my aunt and uncles, they're all into the horror stuff. And so they took me and that was my first haunt visit. And I was scared out of my mind, but I would go like every year, every other year since that with my mom. And I don't know, it's just nostalgic to childhood. And as I grew older, my scaredy catness went away and I was always the weird kid in school. <laughs> so it's only natural that I developed love for the spooky, scary things. Makes sense. And, you know, go, go where all the weird kids go. You know what I mean? This is where we all end I went up. to private school. And so it was a small class of like 20, 25 kids at a time. So you can definitely tell who the weirdo was. <laughs> Word of mouth got around real quick, obviously, then, huh? Yep. Yeah, that's cool. Um, what was the first haunt you, you actually ever went to? Do you remember? It was not Scary Farm. It was Knott's? Yeah, good old Knott's. Mm -hmm. And um, when you first started really getting intrigued to it, like what was it that drove you that was like, damn, maybe – Maybe one day I should try this out. Like if when I when 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 I hit eighteen, maybe I should apply. Maybe I should see what I can do. Or or did you wait a little bit and kept going as a guest, and then finally were like, you know, I'm gonna try this out. I went as a guest, and then for uh, like in 2015, it was my last year going to Knotts, and then from like 2016 on, I would only go to Universal. But oh. that's when I started dating Oingo. Oh. And he is the one who had the idea for us to audition. Like, I love performing, I love acting. I was a theater major in college, did theater in high school. So I was like, why not get paid for what I like to do? Sounds about so right. Yeah. I went mostly for moral support for Oingo because he wanted to, to go for Carnival from the get-go. And... I also auditioned for Dark Ride initially. I was like, I don't know, I guess I'll be a clown because I hadn't been to Knott's in two, three years. So I was like, I don't know what's here anymore. The last thing I remember was Doll Factory. And so I was like, I don't know, I guess Dark Ride because that's what he told me there was. And I got placed in Shadowland. Oh, okay. So what, what year were we at right here? Is this 20, what is this, 18? 2018. 2018. Yeah. Uh, Shadowlands, your first your, your first landing spot at uh, at not Scary Farm as a scare actress. Uh, what was your role? And uh, tell us a little bit about how that first year went for you. I was a death hag, so I was a stunt. Okay. So I was in the room right before the bathhouse. Okay. So I had a little trigger that I would step on when I would hear people come, and it was like this like banshee kind of scream. And me being myself, I actually screamed over the scream. So you <laughs> totally tell when it's me scaring in the YouTube videos and when it's not. But it was fun being a stunt, but it was also very painful because the rig that I had was like a diaper. So I was always going to put foam there and I had bruising. So it was fun, but it was also not fun. <laughs> <And> <laughs> I can imagine. I also got punched in the face and I got a black eye. Oh, shit. Yes, this woman uh, was drunk off her butt and could not hold herself up. And I scared her, so she fell to the ground. And she got up, and as she was coming up, she, like, was back and wham in my eye. She punched out my contact, and she loosened my prosthetic. 
Oh man, that must have hurt. You best believe. You best believe my blackout. Followed them out of the maze and found them, and so I was like, I want them out. It's like justice, man. You were like Batman right there. It's justice. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. I respect it. That's cool. You got them. They're out of here. Get them out of the park. We don't want them in the park. Get them out. We Everybody don't. knows. I also never miss. I never miss a day hunt. Oh, you got perfect attendance then, from what I'm hearing. In three years, yes, perfect attendance. Perfect attendance. Should I? For, I, I, I think the years. next time I see you, I got to print you out a nice award, like perfect attendance, <laughs> three years in a row. Heck yeah. I'm for it. You got to hang it on the wall though, because the next podcast you want, I better hang it like framed on the wall right behind you. I'll, I'll hang it right next to my Monster of the Year certificate. Oh, I feel honored. <laughs> uh, that's a little too high. I was thinking maybe like a little wall hang just for when we do another podcast. But you know, if you want to go that far, I'll, I'll take it. I ain't want to complain. Um, so Shadowlands, your first year, uh, you got to yeah. really experience all the um, stuff you hear about that monsters go through on a daily. Um, mm-hmm. And and I'm sure that was the first of, of many to come, uh, sadly. But um, That was actually my first and only time being Oh, here. and she's got a perfect tracking record. <laughs> Look at her staying clean. Unlike a clown I know. <laughs> I, I could tell you many clowns I know. <laughs> um, that good, good. That's good. That's a good thing, though. No one's fucked with you, um, and, and it makes hopefully makes your job a little bit easier, and, and continues to want to keep going towards the end of the season. Yeah. I mean, I know it gets harder and harder the weeks down in, but it's still they. Sh- you know, you guys show up every day because you love what you guys do. It's Honestly. like it's like the fans. It's like why do they show up every night? Because they love coming to an environment that they feel comfortable and welcomed and just have a lot of joy in. Um, yeah. But I, that's cool. So you went Shadowlands. Uh, how do you feel after that first year? How, what did you think that – did you want to try to push yourself to do something further or were you like, you know what, let me do – let me try one more year in a maze or, and then, or maybe I'm ready for street. Like how did you feel after that first year? I wanted another year in a maze. I wanted – a different kind of experience because I was a stunt. So, you know, it was a little different. Yeah. I wanted another year under my belt to kind of be more familiarized and like a different, because I, I change mazes every year. Mm-hmm. So I wanted a different environment and yeah, I was fully set on being in a maze again, my second year. Yeah. So going into 2019, auditions are around the corner. What was uh, the one you were going for? What is the, a couple that you had in mind maybe, or, or there was just one specific one you wanted to be in? Well, when Haunt Auditions rolled around, I was, let's see, I was five months pregnant. Oh. So I walked my happy ass into auditions and obviously you could see the belly and I let them know I was like I I auditioned I did the audition to the best of my ability with my big old belly <laughs> and I had to meet with pasta at the end because she had to specifically place me somewhere and I had to talk to first aid and get the okay from HR and I was placed in pumpkin eater there you go. You still got it in five months pregnant. Yes, sir. Finished the season seven months going on eight. I, I don't think in the history of doing this show, I have ever heard someone do something like that. And I think that is sets a new show record for the most anyone's had to go through in a season. I mean, you talk about getting hit. You talk about talk about being freaking five months by the end of the season, being seven or eight months pregnant. And I mean that's that's already a battle of its own right there. You know, you're trying to you're trying to keep comfortable. You know, your body's slowly going through those changes of of getting ready to give birth, and you're out there still doing it. Like, how was yeah. that for you? Well, I was placed in pumpkin eater because I was one of Peter's wives, so my safety net was the pumpkin, the big old pumpkin cave, or right. not the pumpkin cave, but the pumpkins that you see us in. And I was in there for the first, like, September, mid-October. And then from, like, mid-October to November, I had to go somewhere else. 
because I could no longer crawl into the opening for the maze for the pumpkin. Right. Because it wasn't like a, a black curtain. It was like a little, little small opening. So it was hard to see. And with a big old belly trying to crawl through that, it was, it was not it. I rolled my ankle. So I, I actually, I had to go to first aid for a little bit. But I was placed in, in the pumpkin cave because there was a camera there where I could be seen. And I had a great blackout. And my mom actually did haunt that year to keep an extra eye on me. Aww, and Pasta man. was nice enough to put her, uh, she was guest control. But Pasta was like, she's going to pumpkin eater. And then towards the end of the season, my mom was filling in as a blackout. So for, I think like the last three or four nights, my mom was my blackout. That is so Which cool is of your mom. An emotional experience. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. You know, I, I hope one day when your when your child gets older, you could just reminisce on this story and tell them like, I was pregnant with you and doing haunt. This is why this is very special to us every year. Oh, uh, she would she would kick whenever I'd scare. <laughs> <laughs> she wants. She's she's already got the she's already got the blood in her. She's already got it in her. Uh, well, Angel and I have already said when she turns seventeen, going on eighteen or eighteen, she's. She has to do one year of haunt, like at least. I would love and to see. If she wants that. to continue doing it, then she can continue doing it. But if she's done after the first year, then we're not going to make her do it anymore. I, I would love to see a family trio, like that. I hope that's in the in the in the planning of all that, the grand we, scheme we, of we it all. To. Yeah. We hope to. But that comes to begs the question: like, what if? Just get this scenario, right? Like, she's already at that age. You guys all get casted streets, but all get casted on three different street zones. That would be, I, honestly, some good competition right there. Some good family competition <laughs> every night. Well, the competition as it was between Goring 20s and Carnival was annoying with Oingo. Oh, man. And we're going to get to that right now. I can't wait to talk a little <laughs> bit about Goring 20s, too. Um, but for you being... Uh, pregnant and getting through that season congratulations i'm glad the, you, you got through it okay I, i'm glad everything Thank was fine you. and i'm glad you still um that was the year i got monster of the year as well oh, my eight cast well deserved well deserved for being five to seven months pregnant by the end you know that's that is ins i've never heard that story ever and so i'm kind of blown away by that that's awesome that's cool and now you got a now you got your girl and now it's just time for her to grow up and let's see where she where fate takes her, right? In, in the haunt world. Cuz for all we know, Already she can be scared. casted at Halloween Horror Nights. And it, that's got to throw us a really <laughs> curveball right there. I don't know who's driving her ass over there. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay, 2019, obviously that sounds like it's going to be a very memorable year for you till the end of time for you. But yeah. Um that's awesome. So, 2020 happens, man. Pandemic happens, but I, I I I would think right, at, right then and there, your worry wasn't even about Han. Your worry was about keeping you and your family healthy and safe during the, uh, yeah, the I, pandemic. Yeah, I kind of enjoyed enjoyed having the time at home and watching her grow every and then, day. And that's the thing about the pandemic. It was either good, you know, it was good for some because of, of moments like that. You got to watch your mm -hmm. daughter grow and stuff. You know, it was bad for other, but I mean, in the end, every everyone got benefited out of it somehow. You know what I mean? Like, and I still worked a haun, but I didn't get to scare. I did urban legends, but <sighs> I guess I'm one of the only people in the world that actually enjoyed that. I worked guest control for it, and I was guest control for the last portion of it in the Bloody Mary scene, and oh it was cool. I got had a, got. A, a little rave every night i, I know it, it was funny because when we went through there my my buddies was like i didn't know bloody mary was a freak <laughs> right after that scene i was like i actually know one of the bloody marys because she also works at haunt oh really okay yeah the better bloody mary i i think she was the best one i didn't i i went i think i went like two or three times first time she i was she yeah. was taller and skinnier like she was taller on the skinnier side I don't even remember. I remember they had a uh, really bad uh, Bigfoot suits on the opening night, <laughs> and then I they never switched... even made it that far out because I was just oh, in my yeah. one spot. And then they had they switched them to ghillie suits after, which I was like, well, it's a it's an upgrade. Yeah. <laughs> Can't see their Nikes or their polo shirts under the damn costume anymore. <laughs> oh man. I tell you, I would not work that again. Yeah, I I just think that was just a pandemic thing for them to make money because they knew they would. I was also too short. That's why they didn't cast me to scare. I was too short. Cause I think you would have been girl, perfect as one of the counselors. 
Yeah, girls, 4'11 and a half. Technically That's... and a half, because my mom's 4'11 and I'm half an inch taller than her. I think that'd have been perfect but yeah, for scary they, they cars. wanted people. I think they wanted people like at least five three and taller. That's uh, that's heightism. Yeah, I don't like Not that. Cool. Um, so then we we return twenty twenty one. Man, this is uh, mm -hmm. this is where things get interesting for your story. Yeah, twenty twenty one. We get announced a new scare zone is uh, is in the making is is going to be coming to not scary farm for the 2021 mm -hmm. season the return season and it is entitled the goring 20s um yes, sir. now this was a very special one because a lot of people know that a lot of this cast was hand picked from auditions um yeah. so this is why it gets a little interesting cuz you were one of those hand picked one of of many talented uh hand picked people to be chosen to work on this zone tell me how that was when you got that role first street zone new zone opening it up hand pick like how, how was the how nervous were you going into that i was actually a little surprised when i was told that i was placed in a street zone because i did my phone like my interview they asked the same questions they do every year and i didn't know what they were basing it off of if it was because they record they do record your auditions and they have those, um, but it's also based on like your performances from your your maids, super, like your supervisors and all that. And I mean, Pasta, Brandon, and John Aspirin all walk through and they they watch you. You know, I don't know what it was based off of. I don't know if it's because like my stamina from doing Haunt Pregnant and never missing a day, but John Aspirin specifically did check on me a lot in Pumpkin Eater, and I know he. Goring 20s was his baby and they told me they're like okay I want to offer you a streets position and I was a little I was a little shocked there was a little five second delay like oh cool and um, my venue supervisor was the one who did my interview and he was like yeah I can't tell you much it's a new zone but I can tell you a little bit about your character can't tell you what uh, he's like a, you're a, a cigar girl you're a little feisty <laughs> And you sell the devil's the devil's elixir. And that, that's all that's all I knew. <laughs> he said it was 20s themed. And that that was it. I didn't know it was the name of the Goring 20s. I didn't know anything else besides my character name. It was Cigar Girl. Still waiting for my cigar, by the way. <laughs> hey, you missed it on the last night. I was giving all my cigarettes and my cigars away. <sighs> <Lying> <laughs> Oh man, that that was a very um, very cool zone, a very uh, fun zone, and it has tons of potential of growing. And I can't wait to see how it expands in the story. Um, opening night comes around, man. The first time I was there, I was there opening night. I saw it, and and I got to see one of the first flow throughs of going through that zone opening night. Um, it's showtime. I mean, you you got you were given very little info to create this character. You were just like mm -hmm. us when it got announced. As far as this is the zone, this is somewhat a little bit of the backstory. You were given very little information of who your character was leading up to that opening night. What was your thought process of how am I going to make this character mine? Like, what am I going to do to to really to put that character out there? Um, as a theater major, you know, I do my best to do my research as an actor. And there's, there's, there was not a lot to go off of, but I did watch a lot of 20s themed movies and listen to a lot of like podcasts and watch a lot of YouTube videos. And obviously I, I did base my character a lot around Betty Boop, even though she was a character made in the 1930s, she was based off of someone who lived during the 1920s. Right. And that's how I kind of modeled my, my voice after when I would say, you know, cigars. And um, one of my fellow Memory Lane uh, family members, he's like, you remind me a lot of Betty Boop. And that's, that's how I got my haunt name. He, he threw it out there. I, I told Oingo and Oingo got some people to approve it. And there it stuck. <laughs> Damn, Betty Boop was born right there. That is, yep. uh, 
Yeah, that's that's a tough one, and I respect you for with the little information that you had. You went in and, and created something that uh, now will forever be a part of that zone for, for you, and you were the first one to do it, and you'll forever be etched. If that zone stains a long time and everything, you'll forever be etched in, in history as the first ever to play that role. And yeah. one of the first, you know yeah. what I mean? And, and no matter what happens in the honk career, I'll always be part of the opening scoring to his crew. Yeah, and that is cool to say. I mean, that alone, like just hearing that, you know, it's just you, you look back to like, okay, if, if it's it for me, then at least I can say I opened up a street zone and it's still there 10 years later. <laughs> so I, I think yeah. I, I respect it. I respect it. So opening night happens. How are we filming How opening are we night? Are we, are we nervous? Are we ready to go? We got a lot of adrenaline pumping. Like crowds are going to start flowing in and seeing you guys doing your thing now in character and costume. Oh, I was. So, I was so nervous because I didn't necessarily know what I was going to do, how I was going to scare. I wasn't sure because it was a lot of ambiance. They, they really wanted us to talk in 1920s lingo. We had to not know what cell phones were. We didn't know like camera, well, the fancy cameras that a lot of the vloggers were taking around. Like we, we really had to stick to 1920s. And I did my best to look up common 1920s jargon but it's it, it was tough <laughs> with a lot of sirs and darlings and wrestling jimmies and all I, that but it, it it was fun it was it was fun to play off of more people because like everyone was so pretty yeah and all of the girls in our sparkly dresses it was it was not easy to get a scare by yourself, so we, we did tag team, and we were at, we were told to tag team because the, the flappers specifically were a lot more, we were a lot more revealing in our, in our costumes than most, so we really had to keep an eye on each other, and I feel like we all did a really good job taking care of each other in that sense. Yeah, I mean, I would walk through there about every time I went, I think I went about four or five times this last year, and I would walk through there, and I would see a lot of a lot of duos together. Um, as far as cigar girls, as far as you know, sparkly dresses, man girl, girl guy, you know, you'd see a lot yeah. of those pairs together, and um, walking through, you know, and then you'd see. But a lot of them fit with a lot of the characters, so it worked out well. You know, it's like okay, you're looking out for each other. But there's storylines still happening. Like this character is relating with this character. This character is having conflict with that character. It was really cool to see that. And I really, I, I mean, you know, you, you talk about movies that, and, and events that happened in the 20s. You know, you're talking about the, um, you know, alcohol. That was a huge thing. The, the you know, all the prohibition era. You know what I mean? And you know, famous gangsters like Al Capone. That you know, all those, all those years. And you know, you talk about movies like, you know, The Great Gatsby and stuff like that, you know, and mm -hmm. it's just, it's a freaking dope era to be in because the styles were cool, the parties were huge, and uh, it was just, seemed like a good time to be alive and have a good time. And going into this zone, it's like you kind of felt that. It was like, uh, it's like, it feels like it's just a giant party here um, and whatnot. I did like the uh the speakeasy <laughs> i thought that was hilarious um i still think it's really cool and i still think we there's a lot of potential in it we liked it at the beginning but we got, we got a new password every night so sometimes it was easy to remember what the word was and sometimes it would just go in one ear at the other i could not remember it sometimes but <laughs> It, it got to a point some people would ask and you know they'd go along with it but there was just some guests that would come and would keep going and we try to send him on a goose chase and we all figured out you know the charlie was the name of the mannequin in the crashed car so we would send people to charlie when we've had enough is you know like a dead end because you know he was dead <laughs> some people just would not get it and, you know, my character's name was Lillian and she was a pretty little, she was a sassy one. And so sometimes people would ask me and I'd be like, oh, and I'd point and fake them out and I'd just walk away. 
I I had a funnier idea that I I came up with earlier in the season, and the idea was if I brought some Dark Harbor tokens and try to hand them to one of the actors, maybe they'll get me in. I don't know. Some of some of us that know what those are would be like, oh, well, what are you what are you paying me for? You know, what's this? Well, first off, it'd be for a cigar. <laughs> And then we'll go, and then we'll talk other payment for the speakeasy, but I want my cigar first. They were at a very cheap price, too. Can't forget it. Um, <laughs> I, I thought that was great, though, and I'm glad that uh, I hope that uh, I hope one year they uh, actually fool people out and be like, uh, yeah, we actually built a fake bar this year, and uh, there's actually a place where you can buy alcohol out of it. And they sell. I mean, I thought just not selling the elixir itself was a missed opportunity, bro. I'm like, that would have been that would have sold so well. People would have bought that shit. Well, with the pandemic and it being closed, you know, there was a lot of plans that I feel like might not have gotten to come to fruition. But we'll see what happens this year. I'm looking forward to it. I I hope to go back to Boring Twenties, but they're changing the audition process on us this year. And with my new job, my, my bosses did say they would give me the time off that I need to do haunt. So I'll probably work my my day job three, four days a week and then do haunt maybe instead of all the days, maybe just on the weekends. So that way it'd be more select to see, to visit Lillian and see Betty Boop out in the streets. I mean, listen. You know where I'll be. I'll be probably everywhere uh, at all these haunts, but Knott's is always home. I know we already have three or four trips planned that we want to do this year. Um, that's a given. But uh, I think you and I have, have had this conversation many times about this. But uh, I, I just, I'm looking forward to 2022, whatever happens. I mean, I feel like last year was kind of a, it was a, still a solid year for both, for some of these events but I feel like it was just to get their uh, their feet in the water again. I feel like this year we're gonna we're gonna pull out the stops. I feel like this year they're gonna we're gonna get what haunt used to be pre pandemic. You know, I think this is going to be yeah. the year uh, more people audition and more people um, come out and scare. Uh, so I'm excited to see what the numbers look like as far as both audiences and um, people working this year. I mean. So the goal for you, obviously, is if, if everything works out, if the stars align, go, hopefully go back to Goring 20s. Um, that's mm -hmm. obviously your end goal right there. That's where you want to head back. Um, and is there stuff that you did last year that – and you don't even have to say it. I just it's a either yes or no. Is there stuff that you did last year that you know that you want to include some new stuff going into that character this year? Is there other things that you've already thought about for, for new a new kind of a 2.0 or an expansion of what your character already has? Yes and no. There's just things I wish I would have done differently that, like – because obviously it was a new zone. We were all getting used to the hang of it because it was – a different kind of zone uh, like forsaken like like kind of the same things that forsaken went through like in their first year but there there's more places to hide and it's a little darker over there boring 20s was nothing but light you could see everything everything was bright and flashy so there wasn't places to hide behind it was it was developing a different type of scaring because you know in pumpkin eater i was able to hide and same thing with shadowlands i was able to get an easier scare so I, there, there are things that I want to do and to tweak to, to try to be a little more scary. I did rely on my cigar box a lot for some scares when I was getting tired. And we, we did have to talk a lot. We had to sell the elixir. We had to interact. We had to sell our cigars. So my voice would get a little run out by the end of the night. And I did rely on my box, which I'm a little thankful for. But I also want to push myself a little further and do things a little differently. I'm all for it. Anything you want to do, I'm there. But like, hold on, hold on. Before you do that, let me get on camera. No, I'm not that type of person. I'm, I'm off to the <laughs> sides. I, I get my sideline footage. I don't want to get an interfere. I hate when people do it, and it pisses me off, so I'm not going to be that dickhead. I'm off on the sides. I'm out of the way. Um, 
one of the last things I want to talk about for the Goring Twenties is the iconic rivalry between the Goring Twenties and <laughs> Carnival. Um, such such a fun time. I mean, you got two zones battling out all season to see who's going to get the final zone of the year win. Yeah. Uh, you guys worked your asses off. They worked their asses off, but ultimately it came down to Carnival taking up the mantle. But how was that? I mean, you had to go home to a Carnival guy every single night. Yep. Um, and what, what's more frustrating, it was, it was one point that Carnival beat us by. Yeah. Literally one point. Uno. So, yeah. So, I mean, there, there's instances where I'd be at Oingo, I'm like, dog, it's one point. Like, come on, you, you weren't that much better. It was just a tiny bit. <laughs> <laughs> like if it was I mean, if it was like a bigger gap then I'd understand but like for a new zone to take like second place it's, it's a lot it's, it's... I'm still happy for for us like yeah I... it's been cool to win but the rivalry was it was fun and our our preacher lady for for a cast her husband was actually the venue supervisor for Carnival, so she and I shared the the same feelings of going home to someone who was from the rival team <laughs> so you got to got to kind of throw each other you know talk about can you believe what this motherfucker said last night we got to step up our game <laughs> nah you guys didn't have well, to step up anything you guys were all fantastic well oingo oingo's a little more showboaty and a little bit more believe me i know <laughs> yeah so i would come home and be like we took the trophy tonight, and he would come home and be like, oh, we're better. <laughs> but, you know, it, it was all fun and games in the end. I'm happy. He he really worked hard to be in Carnival, and I was very excited for him when he – because he found out he was on streets before me because his interview audition was before mine. Right. And I was really happy he was placed where he wanted to be from the beginning. Like, it was his dream to be in Carnival, and – I'm really happy he was able to be part of the new Carnival generation and, and brought back the Golden Haunt trophy to Carnival. It sounded like, all... it, it sound like for you, it hurt a little to say that, though. <laughs> I'm an actor. Oh, yeah. Got to get that uh, Academy Award face on. Come on. I want my Tony. I want your Tony? Oh, you want to do Broadway. <laughs> okay. I respect it. Yeah. Get you on the Book of Mormons. Or the Phantom of the Opera. Can you do Phantom? You think you could do Phantom of the Opera? I used to have the Eponine voice, but I don't think so now. I'm more of a. I mean, in Wicked, I I, I probably could do Glinda, but I'm more of an Alphaba. I love Wicked. I've seen that play three times. I have too. It's my favorite. It's one of it's it's great. I'm a little scared for the movie, but uh, we'll we'll see when we get there. Um, I'm excited. I I just I. They just change stuff all the time for movies and something like Cats. I love that play, and then I saw the movie and I was like, "What the hell is even this?" I still haven't seen it. I refuse to. Oh too. god, the, the play <laughs> is ten times better. Um, I've seen I've seen the the DVD version of the play. Yeah, you and I are big. Uh, there's another fun fact for y'all audience, and you kind of already knew it with me, but now you're gonna know it with her. We are big movie people. <laughs> Uh, we actually are going to go see Top Gun pretty soon. I'm excited for that. So, Betty Boop! It has yes, been sir. an absolute pleasure. But before I let you go, i got to ask you maybe the hardest question of this podcast. Uh, it is usually for a lot of people. Maybe not be with you because you are a movie person. Um, what is your favorite scary movie? Hmm. Well, the first, I was introduced to horror watching The Exorcist. So <sighs> Reagan was my introduction to horror. And my my go to series like comfort horror movies a sense I guess in a sense would be Scream or I'm sorry, I have a clown in front of me. Oh god, um, is it who I think it is? It is. I also like watching Saw. Oh, you know, you're a fan of the gore. I wanna be a mortician when I oh. grow up. Uh, when now when my when my clown child here is older, I want to go to to do the mortician program. If you want to be but a mortician, I, there's a character I need you to look up. And you might already know this character. Halloween Horror Night Down in Florida has a character called... Um, uh, he's a mortician character. Um, I think he's called the caregiver or the caretaker. 
Um, and it's a pretty decent look. It's cool. It's a cool storyline. So definitely check that one out. Halloween Horror Nights out in Orlando. One of the icons. Yes, but it's, it's hard for me to pick a horror, a favorite horror movie, because I watch so many. Depends on my mood, but I, I do I do watch Scream a lot when I'm when I need something. What's the what's what's the best one in your opinion? I don't know. I always like the originals because it's the origin. Originals like my good. favorite Harry Potter my favorite Harry Potter book is the first book because you know it introduces you to to the story to the characters. The Philosopher's Stone. Yes, sir. It's a good one. But, well, Miss yeah, I, can't, I can't really pick a scary movie. <laughs> there's so many out there, and there's so many subgenres in horror. It's just there's no. Oh yeah. It's I could, we'll be here all day trying to break that down. Because <laughs> that's a podcast for another day. Yeah, very much. Miss um, <laughs> Betty Boop uh, Instagram. I know you have the uh, the Instagram page. Um, where can they find you for that Instagram page for Betty Boop? You can just look up KSF Betty Boop. Or KSF period Betty Boop. There's a, I like doing periods. I don't like doing the underscores. <laughs> oh really? Interesting. I think it looks. I think it looks a little better, a little cleaner. <laughs> it's just that little dot that you can barely see on the bottom right there. Yep, KSF dot Betty Boop. Yeah. There, <laughs> there, I'll be posting every so often. I still have some pictures from last year that I haven't put up. Little by little, as haunt season comes closer and closer. Yep. Counting down. Is. Counting down the days. Better Instagram page than KSF got Gomez. You know? So. I mean, I got a little bit more followers than he does. Oh, <laughs> now we're having a little follower <laughs> challenge. Okay. Okay, I see you. Well, uh, Betty Boop. Well, actually, I, he's beating me by two now. I take that back. Okay, I'll, I'll sign into my burner accounts. I got you. <laughs> uh, Betty Boop, it has been an absolute pleasure. Uh, thank you for coming on the show. This was literally... I was on vacation. She asked questions. I was like, when are you doing my show? And she's like, well, when are you having me? And here we are now. Here we are. So I... uh have a little visitor here. Uh, the little one. Appearance. The one who was in... Technically, she was already in Pumpkin Eater. And I'm going to talk to Boston Brandon when she has her first actual year. When she's old enough, I'm going to be like, she should get a vet hat. Sorry, not a vet hat. <laughs> She's already she's already got uh she's grandfathered in. Yes. That's that simple. Hello. Can you say hi? She's like, I changed my mind. She's like, I've seen this this person before and uh he scared me. Too big. Um But with all that being said, I appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to uh join us today. And uh again, we'll we we'll probably talk soon. We always do. Something always comes up. Probably message you after this. <laughs> right after this, or I'll be on the Xbox party, and I'll hear I'll hear you uh, maybe hitting Oingo. That'd be hilarious. Probably um, throwing something at him. Throwing something at him. That's it. That's the name of the game right there. Um, <laughs> with all that being said, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode of the Minus Horror Podcast. If you guys did, hit that like button and that bell notification, and that subscribe button to be where every time we put up a new video, leave some comments down for Betty Boop. Let her know how you feel about the Goring 20s. Why is he here? <laughs> He, he snuck in. That Sorry. was his one cameo, Stanley cameo. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, follow us on Instagram at the Knights of Horror and on Twitter at Knights of Horror. And with all that being said, I'm your host, Anthony, and we'll see you guys next week. Give him the love.